to this Retinal Realities podcast brought to you today thanks to Roche Products. Our hosts today are Claudette and Lindsay, and our very special guest is Zahida, who has a visual impairment caused by retinitis pigmentosa. Please subscribe to our podcast to ensure that we continue to bring you inspiring stories about vision loss. Hi, Zahida. This is Claudette. Firstly, congrats on your amazing performance at the Diskin Ride for Site 2024. Let's go back a little bit further with your journey with RP, how you have coped and succeeded with very limited vision. Thank you for having me on this program. I do appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity. So yes, um, my name is Zahida and I was diagnosed at an early age with retinitis pigmentosa, which is a genetic disorder of the eyes and which causes a loss of vision. You know, for most of you who do know about retinitis pigmentosa, uh, the symptoms are trouble seeing at night and deterioration of the peripheral vision, you know, without those very important, you know, aspects of seeing, it makes it difficult to go about your daily life. But um, as a child growing up, you know, didn't experience too much of trouble at school. Thankfully, in the early stages, um, I was still able to see on the chalkboard and read without any assistance or assistive devices rather. So it wasn't too strenuous. Of course, then as time went by and going out at night with friends and that became a bit more, um, you know, challenging. The real difficulty was when I was studying law and um, because of the tedious amount of reading, I found that it was becoming, um, you know, very challenging for me to complete my tasks timelessly, uh, especially when it came to writing examinations and, um, you know, having to read the examination paper without any assistive devices became very difficult and time consuming. And um, that is when I approached Hazel and she was at the Low Vision Center at the Rand African University, which is where I studied. And she introduced me to the amazing assistive devices, which really was a game changer for me. I really was so grateful to her because it really assisted me tremendously. And even having to do my hours at the law clinic was easier because I was able to do everything there at the law clinic because she arranged for the assistive devices to be at the law clinic as well as at the student bureau. So in the time because of the difficulty of seeing, of course, we cannot drive. So transport was a bit of an issue. So having to get to university and go back home was obviously always a challenge. But um, she managed to get the device for me at the student bureau. And thankfully, you know, during the time that I would have just been sitting around waiting for transport, I could actually complete my tasks and all my work and studying at the university. So it was amazing. And that's when I decided that nothing will stop me you know, in terms of this challenge that I face on a daily basis. If I was able to overcome that, and I even graduated in the top 15% of the faculty, so I got the Golden Key Awards as well. So it was a great achievement for me. And uh, thankfully, I met my husband, who's so supportive, and we got married, and we now have three beautiful children. They're just as amazing as well, because they're always laughing at me doing silly things. But then they're also so supportive, very, very supportive. And to all of you out there with visual impairments, it's we know it's difficult. It might sound rosy and easy, but it's not. Simple tasks like reading on an ingredient can or just knowing what it is actually. But, you know, with all the amazing assistive devices there are out there and apps and these things to assist people like us, just makes your life easier and less difficult. And that is why I would strongly suggest make your life easier. Find out about uh, the assistive devices and the new apps that can assist you. Make yourself aware of all these things that can make your life easier on a daily basis. So that's, that's, great. that's my so, story. <laughs> yes. And it's a wonderful story of strength and courage. And you are an inspiration to many now, you've always been a volunteer at the Disc and Ride for Sight, but this year you actually participated. And it was thanks to Lindsay's passion and vision that the para event actually happened. Lindsay, won't you tell us a bit about this? Sure, no problem. So the para category has always been around for the Disc and Ride for Sight, and it was introduced to promote inclusive cycling to individuals with either a visual or physical impairment. The category consists of paracyclists, hand cyclists, or tandem teams, aimed to providing an opportunity for everyone to participate equally. 
Despite previous years are seeing a maximum of only about four entries, this year's goal was set at 25 para-entries, reflecting our commitment and inclusivity to the accessibility of the event. And I'm proud to say that we reached 32 para-entries for 2024, and the team cons consisted of four hand cyclists, seven para-cyclists with physical disabilities, and we had 21 tandem teams with visual impairment. So, Ida, I'd like to ask you, what was going through your mind the first time you got onto a tandem bicycle with your volunteer pilot, George, knowing that you had to ride 62 kilometers with only four weeks of training ahead? Can you describe the emotions you experienced? <laughs> yes, absolutely. I can because it's stuck in my head. I won't forget it. <laughs> so, <laughs> of course, it was extremely overwhelming, but I'm not going to be dishonest about it. I had set a goal for myself this year. And I told myself that this year, I'm actually going to do something out of the ordinary and for myself. My husband's a triathlete. So I always find myself supporting him. My daughters are very athletic and my eldest daughter plays for the first team of her school, hockey. I am always supporting them and, you know, trying to do whatever I can to make things easier for them. And this year, I just set out a goal for myself to say, I'm going to do something for myself that's going to be a challenge for me but at the same time beneficial. So when I attended the uh, Retina meeting in January, that's when Lindsay introduced, when you introduced it to me. And of course, you remember, I was so excited about it, but I was also nervous. But Lindsay was so encouraging. And that's when I said, this is the perfect opportunity. We met at the stadium and Lindsay introduced me to my pilot and he was so warm and welcoming as well. Actually, I wasn't nervous when I got onto the bike. Um, I don't know what overcame me. I was thrilled. I was actually feeling so like exonerated, like I was, you know, we were riding and everything was going so well. And, you know, he started increasing the speed and it was just so thrilling. I felt so good about myself. And when we finished that um, session, uh, you know, I had set my goal on eight kilometers and George was, told me that, no, eight kilometers, we surpassed that already. So we're definitely going to go for the 62 kilometers. And so did Lindsay tell that to me as well. So I was like, I don't know about 62 kilometers, people, because we're just starting off. But let's see how it goes, you know. So there was all a mix of emotion. But I think because I had this mindset from the onset that I am going to do something for myself, I think that's where it just all fell into place. And the timing was impeccable for me. So it was really amazing. Yeah, well, it was amazing to have you part of it. Um, how did you feel to be part of a team of visually impaired individuals, all preparing for the same cycling event altogether, especially knowing that you were all together for the very first time? Yes. So, you know, I'm not sure how other people with disabilities or visual impairment feel. If I'm not a part of something, when you don't feel included into in something, just lets down your mood completely. That's how I am. When I'm amongst people, I like to be included in the conversation. And for me, this was just so amazing because these people were all on the same level as I am, going through the same emotions mixed feelings, anxious, but at the same time feeling determined and encouraged. So I think it felt really awesome to be a part of the group. And everybody was so amazing and generous with help and kindness. And we all, you know, felt the same feelings. And it was that for me was just so amazing. And that's why I would certainly want to continue with tandem cycling. Mm -hmm. And how did you overcome any apprehensions or fears that you may have had about participating in such a physically demanding event as a first-timer? It is. And what I did is my husband generously put up a stationary bike for me to train on because nobody around where we love has a tandem. So I wouldn't have had that opportunity to train during the week, apart from the Sundays where we were meeting up to train. I set goals for myself and I told myself, I'll start off with 30 minutes on the bike each day and gradually increase that to an hour, an hour and a half, two hours as the time goes by, just to see what my endurance levels will be like. And that's what I did. After the training session, I felt each week um, that we did meet up on the Sunday, I felt so much more determined and encouraged and less nervous and more confident going at that speed, traveling on the road. So the training definitely assisted me. Apart from that, it's all really a mindset. People with disabilities will, I'm sure, share the sentiment that it's all in the mind because if you put your mind to something, you can do it.
Definitely. I fully agree. And also time in the saddle with you putting that extra effort in during the week, sitting on the stationary bicycle will definitely help you for your event. I can definitely say that. Can you describe the atmosphere and the energy of the cycling event itself, especially as you and your fellow para-athletes all embarked on the 62-kilometer 60 journey together? Yes, that morning. We just all had different feelings and we all were encouraging one another. I think we have to take our hats off to our pilots because each one of them was so encouraging. George kept telling me, everything's going to be fine. We're going to be good. Don't worry. And so you could hear the other pilots convincing their parents the same, you know. And I think that's so important that you have the right person and that there are people out there that are willing to give up their time and do this volunteer work and to assist people like us because not everybody will want to do that. And it's a huge responsibility. They don't know what they're getting themselves into until they actually riding with your para. They all were just so inspirational. It was just like so much of camaraderie ship. It was just amazing. It was really, really good. And you came second. And that was absolutely <laughs> amazing. We've yeah. always looked up to you. You've been involved with Retina South Africa for a long time. And what role has Retina South Africa played in your life? And what advice would you give to others who may be hesitant to try and a sport due to their vision loss? Retina South Africa has been an organization for me, a sense of belonging. From the onset, when I joined Retina South Africa, I always felt, and I was much more involved previously, being on the committee, being part of the national committee. And at one point, I was even the chairperson in the um, Pretoria branch when we had branches. It really played an important and a pivotal role in my life, having guided me throughout in terms of having my DNA samples uh, being sent over to Est Estonia, all done through uh, Retina South Africa. So I feel like Retina South Africa is my backbone in terms of being there for support. Claudette is a world of information. If there's anything you need to know about the eyes, Claudette's the person to reach out to. She's got such a vast knowledge about the different retinal conditions. Definitely, if you haven't yet joined Retina South Africa, and if you do have a visual disability, you should definitely join them. It's good to be a part of an organization like this, where you know the support is there. If you need any information about anything of your condition or disability, you can receive that. And then in terms of people who are out there wanting to join a para sport. I'm a typical example of a person who's not very active. My family are very active people. And I think because of my disability, I never really took part in sports in school and so forth. I was always the queen of the sports every year. And I was always, uh, my family always would laugh about that. Having done the disc game ride for side, it was a real challenge for me. And I must say, I really enjoyed it thoroughly. And it gave me a feeling that, you know, even though you have a disability, don't let that stop you. Because this is a true example of how I got on a bike 35 years ago, I sat on a bike and rode um, independently. 35 years later, I've now sat on a tandem bike and I was perfectly fine. And there were so many others in the same position, didn't ride a bike for so many years. I have a little sight, um, like about maybe 5% of vision left. The other pairs, some of them were completely blind and sat on the bike and all of them managed to complete it. So there's no task that you can put your mind to and that you can't do it. And this is a typical example of it. It's, it's something that you can, you can absolutely do if you put your mind to it. Self-determination is everything. And I was just about to say, let's look back. And I was going to ask you, what was the most important lesson that you've learned at participating at the Discam Ride for SAS? And I think you really just nailed that question Absolutely. without even asking it. I think it's amazing what both of you have done. Lindsay is the leader. And Zahida is the absolute example of what you can do when you want to. So if anybody would like to participate in any of our future events, we're going to do spinning and bowling and we're going to do all sorts of things. Please contact us through our website, which is www.retinasa.org.za. And one of us will contact you and encourage you to be as brave and as successful as Zahida. And I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to Retina South Africa. A huge thank you to you, Lindsay, because if it wasn't for you who introduced me to it, I wouldn't have embarked on this journey. And of course, thank you to George, my pilot, my family. My husband was an extreme backbone for me, taking me to the training sessions and being there for me, purchasing the shoes that I required and my kids as well. They were just so proud of me and everybody else, you know, my entire family, my friends, 
all the give and gain people who um, donated to Retina South Africa. Thank you to everybody who's participated, supported, and just encouraged me. It's so insp inspiring, and I really am thankful to everybody. And also thank you for all the interesting insights and for inspiration that all three of you are. And thank you again to Roche Products for supporting our Retinal Reality Series. Thank you.